What's up YouTube, Redbeard's Garage, and welcome back to another video. Today we're getting back on the curse of the street go-kart. Now it isn't no secret that I absolutely have had nothing but trouble out of the street go-kart. Every video becomes a super big pain because nothing works out. So uh, in this video we're going to put the exhaust on, we're going to throw the original gas tank back on, and uh, we're going to line up that torque converter. So uh, let's quit wasting time and get right into it. Alright, so we're back on this thing again. Um, that's what I could end up doing with the air filter. Made kind of a, a intake pipe on it out of PVC and then put a two inch coupler on there. I think it looks pretty nice, so I wish that coupler was red, but it actually goes with Honda because everybody knows that Honda is blue, red, and white. Now we're going to pull this rear pulley off and put that washer in there. I have all my washers laid out on the workbench there, and I'm just gonna put one behind this rear pulley and see if it clears, and then if I need to, I can add another. We definitely have enough uh, bolt to so the nut will still get a good bite and then we'll have to adjust that front pulley. So I'll get you on tripod and we'll get this thing done. All right, now this is a 15 16 uh, lock nut. We got that off, we're gonna slide this whole pulley off. There we go. It looks like it already has a few washers on there, but it definitely needs, it needs a few more. All right, I do have these washers. They're a little bit bigger than the shaft, but all we're trying to do is, is get it away from that chain. This is with one washer, so let's see if one washer is, is enough. No, it looks like it's gonna need, need one more. That looks like it gives it enough clearance, so we can go ahead and put this lock nut back on, and we can pull that front pulley off to put some washers behind it. This is a 5 8 by the way, in this front pulley. I actually like that the 40 series comes with, with the key already made in the, the pulley. In the pulleys, that's pretty nice. Now I'm just going to eyeball this and make sure it's in line. I'm going to throw the belt on. That's also a good way to kind of tell where everything needs to sit. I can tell you, these 40 series, you can tell they're a lot better quality, built a lot tougher, which, I mean, they're supposed to be. Looks like one more washer got it right there. So we can try it, and it's nothing to pull this off and uh, put another one on there if we ever need to. So as you can see, the belt looks like it's pretty straight. I may have to add another washer later to that front pulley, but like I said, it's uh, no problem to pull that one bolt out and pull that pulley off there. Now we just got to tension up the chain and we can uh, and align the motor back up because we've been moving the motor some. And then we can bolt the engine down in place and probably go ahead and slap that gas tank back on this engine. I think after that we'll start worrying about how we're going to adapt that exhaust. Okay, now I've got this old original gas tank all ready to go back on. This thing looks really rough. And I didn't want to want to use it on here, but it's all I got right now, so we're just going to go with it. It'll be okay, I'm sure. I got some stover nuts, so vibrations won't cause anything to back out on me. I'm going to go ahead and get those fingers tied on there. And I uh, couldn't find the original bolts, but I had some stainless steel stuff that should work just fine on this thing. There's just two nuts on the rear, and then on each side of the gas tank, uh, it takes takes a bolt. And I did go ahead and put a new piece of fuel line on this tank. I left the original clip right here for the fuel line. If you're gonna be working on these motors a lot, it's a good idea to run down to a Napa or any uh, auto parts store and buy about, I always buy 10 foot sections of the fuel lines that I need because it always comes in handy not having to run to the parts store. The parts store isn't far from my house, but it's still a hassle having to run down there every time I need something. Now I'm just putting the fuel line on the carburetor and go ahead and tension the motor up where it's going to set and figure out how 
I want to do that exhaust. Looks like the chain's tensioned up right there, but I don't like that this spark plug wire is hitting this frame. So what I'm probably going to do is take one more link out of this chain so I can set the motor a little bit more forward because I don't, I don't want that interfering with anything and that could let that exhaust pipe fit. You know, it seems like no matter what we do, this exhaust pipe is definitely not going to uh, work. And I know I can just take a hammer and put a good dent in the pipe right there in this pipe, but I really don't want to beat up the frame even though this frame is kind of, kind of garbage status. But, I mean, I'm talking, it's, it's not much, and it would fit. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a link out of this chain so we can adjust that motor a little bit far, farther forward. Now that chain's pretty tight. I like mine tight because the chain's going to stretch a little bit once you ride the go-kart some. So I always get my chain, you know, pretty well tight, and it'll loosen itself up after stretching a little bit. I know some people are against that. They leave theirs a little loose, but I would rather just get it tight. It'll stretch a little bit and give it that little bit of playroom. I always tighten my outside bolts, the two bolts on the side of the engine that's on the opposite side of the torque converter. Just in case your engine plate isn't perfectly level, it'll pull that chain tight before you tighten the inside, which will pull it back down. All right, the chain's all tight, the engine's bolted down. Okay, to get the exhaust how I want it on this street go-kart, I'm going to have to hack up the Go Power Sports exhaust. Because of this crossbar, and I don't want to dent this up, the pipe isn't going to work. So what I'm going to do is this is a one-inch outside diameter pipe. Now, these pit bike mufflers from Amazon, I think they look really cool, and they have a one-inch uh, inside diameter coupler on the back. So basically this exhaust should slide in there really nice and tight. And then I can just weld me a hanger for this muffler sticking out the back of the go-kart. So what we're gonna do is throw this in the vise. Now I'm gonna cut it up in a couple pieces to uh, make the exhaust how I want it. And then I'll just cut this. The first thing I'm gonna do is cut this flange off. And uh, the only thing you have to worry about when welding the exhaust to this flange is the flange warping. So what I'm gonna try to do is uh, bolt it to the engine and get it all tacked up where I want it. Then I can pull it off and hopefully be able to really keep this thing as straight as possible so the heat won't warp it. Maybe I'll just do a few little beads at a time and not uh, do the full bead all the way around it to keep that from you know warping up and not get a good seal on the head. So I'm going to throw this in the vise and we'll get to cutting this thing apart and make a pretty cool exhaust for the street go-kart. got that flange cut off this exhaust so next I'm going to put the flange in the vise and take a flat disc and uh, grind that it's pretty smooth I may take the cutting disc and cut it a little closer uh, because it'll be a lot easier while it's in the vise Now I'm going to take my punch and try to knock the, the rest of the pipe out of that little lip. And it's coming right out. So we got that all grinded out and that piece of pipe out of it. This of course is the outside and this is the inside towards the head. So we didn't grind any against the part that's going to be pushing against the head because we don't want to warp it up and cause an exhaust leak. Now we just need to make sure our pipe still fits in it and it is going to need a little bit of die grinder work around it. I'm gonna do that real quick and we can bolt this to the head of the go-kart and leave it bolted up so we can clock our exhaust how we want it and get everything adapted up for it. So let's get this thing done. Now the pipe is fitting down in there real nice. Um, so let's get this bolted to the head. I'm thinking somewheres in there I will cut this pipe because that'll give me a nice like 45 coming off the head so the muffler can kind of slant out towards this side. I don't want it slanting this way because I could re-clock this and point the muffler out this way but that's in the direction of my air filter and I don't want it sucking exhaust fumes. So I'm going to go ahead and cut this bend off of uh, this exhaust pipe because we're definitely not going to be needing it and then we'll go ahead and find out where we need to cut it on this straight piece. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so we got the exhaust done. I'm sorry I didn't film it all. My Some of my family stopped by and I kind of was talking to them while I was working on it. But as you've already seen, we got the cold air intake. I am going to sand that pipe down, uh, all the casting marks off of it, and then paint it black. Later on, we can add the nitrous barb, probably right in this elbow. So it's a direct shot into the carburetor. And as well, I put this breather for the valve cover right there. I think it looks really nice onto the exhaust you see me cut some pieces up and this is fully mounted this isn't going anywhere i am going to weld on a piece of uh, flat stock to this for this hanger to bolt to i think it'll look you know really nice with that hanger on there and it just gives a muffler support because these mufflers only slip onto the exhaust so as you can see this is how i end up running this i went to one of my buddy's house and that's the original pipe of course going to the exhaust flange so my buddy ended up having this coupler that was one inch inside diameter and i welded it to the original exhaust pipe or what i cut off of it anyways and then he had this cone piece i couldn't have found a better piece of metal to work out for this exhaust because that cone one end had a one inch outside diameter and the other end had a one and a half inch so I welded that little coupler in between the two. This exhaust pipe actually slides all the way to right here. So there's no, no places for there to be any turbulence inside the exhaust. Then that cone fit really snug. Actually, before I welded this piece on, I took a two by four and kind of tapped this inside the muffler. So that's got a really nice seal and it shouldn't ever leak. There's no back pressure on this exhaust anyways. Now I am going to later wrap this exhaust in header wrap to keep heat away from that belt. I do have some exhaust uh, header wrap. I'll try to dig out here in a little bit and go ahead and get that done. I do want to paint the valve cover red on this and maybe try to sand the OHV, you know, and leave it shiny. I'll see what I can do with that. Yeah, let me know what you think of this exhaust in the comments below because I absolutely love it. I've been wanting to do this for a long time and I'm going to start putting these pit bike mufflers on my go-karts. They're a straight blow-through muffler, but it really sounds nice on these engines. Um, and then of course the spooler, once it's up there, it's gonna add to it. This thing is gonna absolutely, hopefully it's fast. Uh, I mean, it should be with this big block nine horse, but I went ahead and got all those bolts for the steering wheel. So it's all bolted on and tightened down. So that's all ready. I am gonna adjust the toe and camber of these wheels, or not the camber, just the toe, uh, because it wants to fight you when you when you turn one way, it yanks you that way. You know, it's wanting to fight to go both ways at the same time. So the fronts of the tires basically just both need to be pushed out some. So I'll adjust those tie rod links here in just a little bit. Now I got to mount this old brake line down so it's not, you know, just flipping and flopping everywhere. And then we'll lay the seat on there and see how much clearance we have. I'm still gonna run that bench seat for now, but really soon I'm going to uh, break out the, the bucket seat that I have, cut it and extend it make it wider because it's like a, a extra large and they're really made for smaller people i mean I, my hips won't even slide in the dang thing so we're gonna definitely extend that but uh it's coming along pretty nice so the street go kart is uh giving us a little bit back it's gave us nothing but headaches during this build it's been absolutely a pain to work on that's why you've seen such a pause in between the videos it was because i was just absolutely tired of it uh, we do have a lot of special stuff coming up in episode 6. You're going to finally get to hear it run. I wanted to include that in this video, but it's been raining for the last few days. And I got it all wrapped up outside because it won't fit in the garage with this big four-seater build that's going on. Now, the exhaust does sound awesome. Um, I will be doing a run down the road in the next episode so you can hear the exhaust note, see how it performs, and uh, we'll work out any kinks that we have from then on. We're going to get that steering address, put the bucket seat on it, and uh, then we'll finally, once everything is completely done, then we'll go to uh, paint and uh, getting all the welds finalized, like I said, and primer it and paint it all up and make it look nice. Guys, as always, do not forget to go check out Go Power Sports. They have a huge amount of go-kart parts from seats to axles to steering wheels to torque converters. Whatever you need for your go-kart, I'm sure they're going to have you covered. And use that Redbeard discount code to save 10% on your purchase. Now tell me what you think of the street go-kart in the comments below. Uh, this thing has fought me. This video wasn't so bad. I did miss half the exhaust build because I had some family over, so uh, beg my part on that one. But uh, we'll get this thing finished up in the next couple episodes and uh, get this four-seater go-kart pushed out so we can start some other massive projects. Uh, V-Twin would be one of those. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Go check us out on Facebook and Instagram, and always come back to Redbeard's Garage. I'm out.